Hey guys, I received an email from China promoting an alternative LED aiming device for the K40 laser. You may have seen my red laser dot I mounted onto my machine's laser head. This should make aligning the working material easier and quicker as it indicates the exact impact point of the CO2 laser. Now my setup may look okay on the first sight, but I confess working with this red laser dot caused me to throw away several sheets of acrylics and wood because of misalignment. My construction is adjustable into two axes, what is handy, but what also can easily get problematic. when. I accidentally touched the laser head for example. When the laser finished its cutting cycle, it resets itself to zero. What gets defined in your laser software? So zero can mean the laser head resets itself somewhere over the laser bed. I got used to switch off the laser entirely when I take out the finished sheet, so I got the bad habit to push the laser head away by hand. I know a lot of you will now say that this might be bad for the belts uh, or even inducts current over the stepper motors into the main PCB that can cause it to short out, but this is how it goes sometimes when you are on a strict time schedule. In the last two years the screwed procedure never cost me a problem, but doing this also moves the laser diode that is mounted onto the laser head and it becomes loose over time. I had tried a 3D printed attachment for the laser that holds the laser diode in place, but there is no way of adjustment. Those parts are cheap and are not threaded over the bottom laser head, but simply held in place by a set screw. So pointing the red dot on its perfect position takes a lot of patience, napkins and toothpick tips to jam the diode in the right place. Then I have the other issue that depending on the thickness of my working piece, the red laser beam hits the target in another angle giving you a wrong impression of where the K40 laser beam will hit it. As we saw in my video of how to engrave cylinders without a rotary attachment, we can get pretty close with the working material before the laser gets too much out of focus. So another risk of misaligning that I want to avoid in the future. A professional solution would be a beam combiner that sure also exists for the K40 laser. For around 60 bucks it is still affordable but takes time and skill to install. A beam combiner basically is a half translucent mirror that reflects the CO2 laser beam but lets through the red laser light from behind, aligning both beams perfectly parallel. When installed and calibrated correctly, it is a pleasure working with it. But in my case I want to build something that works without drilling holes and spend hours for the alignment process. Now a LED ring will for sure not replace a red dot laser and it certainly will not be better than a beam combiner. But maybe even it is not as bright, uh, it might work better than uh, my current setup and for a building cost of around 7 bucks I want to give it a try. So the experiment of the day will be building a LED targeting ring and find out if it is worth it. As always you can download the design as a CDR file on my webpage to build an experiment on your own. The link is in the description below. But I would recommend of watching this video to the end first to see if this build is even worth of making the effort. As I said this is an experiment. So that Chinese email of my friend Tao Zhong, never heard of him before, states having a LED ring that mounts onto the back of the laser bat right after the first mirror. No drilling, no adjusting, etc. Too good to be true, right? Well, already at the first thought I was pretty skeptical because sending unfocused light over two tiny little 20mm mirrors doesn't sound like something that will give you much of a visible output, even when considering the light to get focused over the laser laser lens. But I thought I will give it a try and build something my own to see how much of a reflection stays visible under the lights of the laser bed. Now let's get started of building the LED focus ring light. Here is what we need. 16 LEDs. In my case I use cool white LEDs that require 2.5 to 3 volts on 20 milliamps. The 220 ohms resistor is optional as so often I am out of the required value. So I will show you how we can get around it without. You will also need a soldering iron and some thin wire to hook up the LED ring to the power supply. Speaking of that, I use an old 5V USB charger here. Else we need 4 neodymium magnets. Mine are 5mm thick with a diameter of 10mm. If yours have different dimensions, you simply need to change the size of the holes in the Coral Draw software. A sheet of 3mm acrylic or wood both work, but I recommend acrylic as the cuts are getting a bit sharper and um, the product looks a bit better in the end. 4 M3 20mm long bolts with nuts and one kitchen sponge cloth. You will see soon why we'll need that. And no, it's not because I spilled my beer over the cave. <laughs> 
So as always, we need our safety goggles and a little water spritz bottle in case something catches fire, especially when cutting the sponge cloth. Now I simply go ahead and open the CDR file I made in advance for you. By the way, when you like those videos and the free files for download, please subscribe to my channel so that lets me know that the work I put into this is also helping the community. As you can see here, we use the 3D cutting principle I explained in another video, link on the right upper corner, by cutting multiple layers and gluing them together later. This red object here we need to make invisible for now. We can also delete it and uh, open the project again later as we cut this separately. I put this all together into one file to make it easier. Now let's go ahead and cut out the main parts. I use full power and a speed ratio of 20 millimeters per second. To be sure the cut got through, I make three passes until I see whether some of the parts become loose or until the laser light gets reflected back from the honeycomb or bottom plate of the housing. That's also a good trick when you cut wood, by the way, but who I am talking to. So I have my pieces cut out here and you may see what I'm going for. In my design I want the LEDs to point more or less directly into the small mirror. So we need to bend the legs of the LEDs uh, to a certain angle. To do this equally we need some little distance between the LED casing and the acrylic sheet. So the cloth gives us that distance and in the same time it is soft and squishes together when bending the LED legs in place without too much resistance. You may have seen that this upper ring is a bit smaller and uh, that's not a failure but part of the design. It will push the LEDs in a certain angle that I have calculated for hours. No, that would go over my mathematical knowledge. I tried it out in six tries until I found an angle that works. Next step will be the wiring of the LEDs and here is what I do to avoid using a resistor. I will wire two LEDs in series. Every LED needs about 2.5 volts. Connecting two together in series adds up the voltage. 2.5 plus 2.5 equals 5 volts. The eight pairs will be wired in parallel to the power supply. Important is that when you stick through the LEDs, you arrange them with alternating polarities. Long leg, short leg, long leg, short leg and so on. Now I first connect every two LEDs together, bending over the legs and uh, solder them together. It takes very little solder, uh, also you don't want to melt the acrylic here, so try to be quick. Next I strip two pieces of wire that will run around the outer ring. Also this will be the wire that we will hook up the power supply. So make sure it's long enough. I coat the stripped parts uh, in solder to make it an easy job to hook everything up. Be careful about the polarities here and double check if you haven't made any mistake somewhere. Make sure nothing has shortened out. Now snip off any excess ends, then it's time to give it a try. So I crank up my power supply to 5 volts. Now let's test if this thing is somehow usable. Due to the magnets installation is as easy as snapping it onto the metal casing. With a piece of masking tape I now try to center the beam output by using my laser goggles and the laser's test button. All right. 
Right, this should be good enough. Let's power this thing up and see. Hmm. Okay, that is more disappointing than I thought. When I turn off all the surrounding lights, we can see some sort of arc on the working material. It would work better when the ring light diameter is smaller, yet at least it would project the whole circle. But considering the light output of this thing, I think this build was a fail. The light that makes it through the mirror array is just way too dim to really work with. And the dazzling light that comes off the ring makes it even harder to locate the projected target. I could attach a piece of PVC pipe to contain the light more directional, but I think every other effort will be wasted time. It's simply not bright enough. So conclusion, the idea is nice, but unfortunately it's not as simple and as bright as you might think. The installation might look easy, but considering that you have to run a cable from the 5 volt power supply to the unit takes the same effort as running a cable to a laser diode on the sled. Even without the plastic chain, you could easily attach a cable in a way that it won't jam the sled when moving. So it is not worth it of building or buying an LED targeting ring at all. Me, I will stick with my laser dot and will invest into a simple laser holder for around 15 bucks on eBay. Maybe in the future I will upgrade to a real beam combiner. The LED ring itself still is a nice little tool and it is super bright and due to the magnets I use it as an additional movable light source inside of the laser bed and around my macro lens to evenly light up very close objects. Now even this experiment failed, I hope you enjoyed and um, so as I learned something. If you like those videos and want to see more there is a whole playlist of my laser videos and if you want to see when I upload a new video consider to subscribe and ring this little bell to get a notification. Until then, see ya!